Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and today I'm going to be testing MVA 2K19 on the GeForce CTX 750Ti. I'll be doing 1080p, 900p and 720p. To skip down of those sections of the video, check the timestamps down in the description. So well, first of all, 1080p using lower shadow shader and volumetric lighting. Shader and shadows will be lowered from ultra to high. Volumetric lighting turn off, texture quality on medium across the whole video due to the 2 gigs of VRAM that we have. And this is enough to be over 50 frames per second pretty much all the time. The game feels very smooth and we get very good visuals nonetheless. Just keep in mind that on 1080p I overclocked the GTX 750Ti, I added 200MHz to the core and 400MHz to the VRAM. On 900p and 720p the overclock is completely disabled. Then on 900p I use almost the same settings as on 1080p but I kept volumetric lighting turned on. Not a huge performance difference but it can be noticeable at times. Just turn off volumetric lighting and I recommend doing some overclock to the GPU. And finally at 720p I just lowered the shader detail from ultra to high. The rest just cranked up to the max, except in textures once again. And this is more than enough to be over 60 frames per second pretty much all the time. Just keep in mind that at 60 frames per second target is when the game is going on, when you're actually in control of the game. When there are some close-ups or replays when the camera moves around, there it can easily drop below 60. The game is very demanding when looking at stuff with different camera angles, so be aware of that. The 60 FPS target will be when just playing the game normally. Across all my videos testing NBA 2K19, I'll be targeting 60 frames per second, and if that's difficult, I'll just target 50 to 60, pretty much. That's because even the consoles are targeting 60 frames per second, so that's good as a baseline in my opinion. The game feels very responsive, and it's not that difficult to achieve, even on a 4-year-old GTX 750 Di. And in the options menu, the options that gave me the biggest boost in performance, first of all, were shader and shadow detail level. By just lowering those from ultra to high, you usually get a big boost in performance, then monometric lighting and ambient occlusion are also a decent boost. And if you want to boost in performance in close-ups to players on all the kind of stuff, just disable depth of field and motion blur. Those options are used quite a bit in close-ups. And then if that's not enough, lower the other options I didn't mention like player detail level, crowd and media people detail level. Those usually come in handy when you already lowered all the other options. But if you put the player crowd and media people detail level to the minimum, it's like the players are just playing by themselves, there's no people around which I find it quite hilarious. Another texture quality, if you have a 3 gigs of VRAM video card or more, use textures on high. If you have 2 gigs, use medium. There's a massive visual difference between high and medium in this case. And in some cases, I recommend lowering the shader and shadow detail level to high or medium and crank up the anti-aliasing option because if you don't use anti-aliasing at least on two times, the edges can look very blurry. The temporal anti-aliasing solution is kind of bad, in my opinion. There's a lot of movement on screen. So yeah, those are overall my recommendations. This game wasn't that CPU intensive, but a two-core four-thread G4560. In some cases, when using a GTX 1060, when getting close to 70 to 80 frames per second, the CPU can be maxed out. Still enough to play the game, but be aware of that. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much it i hope you keep enjoying the video thanks for watching and see you next time brings to the locker room how hood following durant's three-point attempt and he was camped in the lane there and he gets the three-second call warriors leading by four and here in the first uh, about three minutes in Outside for Curry, to the middle, here's Cousins, and the shot is good. As much as today's game is being played on the perimeter, it's good to see Cousins attacking inside. Timeout is called first of the game for the Cavaliers. The Warriors have three elite scores, but in the half court, Steph Curry is the key. It all starts with his ability to break down the D, get into the lane, and create for his teammates. And the Cavaliers making a change here. Osman's checked in. They need this one. No good that time. The Warriors go the other way. With it. Here's Green. Beautiful dish, and the layup goes down. Steve, you think about Curry inside. How about his finishing? I mean, I mean, just amazing. A shot maker, not just a shooter. Whether it's pull-ups, floaters, English off the glass. He's high efficiency without being a high flyer. Love kicks to Osman. Just five to shoot. That one off the back iron and out. 
Warriors leading by eight. Durant the pass to Curry. Now here's Cousins. Launches it. That's a miss. He's made one and missed one. Here's Hood. The Cavaliers again can't hit. And Cousins kicks to Curry. And a kind roll that time off the rim as that one falls. And Greg Anthony, our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. All right, let's set the floor. Courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. And so in the game for the Cavaliers, on the perimeter, Smith and Hood. Love is the four with Thompson in the middle. And it's Sexton in at the one spot. Now, here's Thompson. Clock at four. No good on the shot. A bit long that time. And Z Webb, you talk about a tandem of shooters. None better than Steph Curry and Clay Thompson. Yeah, splash. You know, the splash brothers. Steph Curry, uh, he is the best shooter of all time. But I would say this Clay Thompson is not far off. You think about his 60 point game in 2017. He only took 11 dribbles. He had the ball in his hands for only 90 seconds. And he dropped 60. I mean, that's one of the all time scoring clinics. And about a minute gone here in the first quarter. Sexton dishes to Hood. From down in the low post, it goes. Hood's got the opening field goal of the game for the Cavs. Curry kicks to Green. Poked away. Curry with it. Outside Durant. First quarter of play with about a minute and a half gone. Good D from Love. Inside. That shot off. The Warriors go the other way with it. Durant for three. Good, and Curry gets the assist. Uh, and when Durant is looking to score off the catch like that, there isn't a lot you can do as a defender. Now, here's Sexton. Kicks to Hood. Love with the screen for Hood. Pass to Smith. Love with the screen for Smith. And it goes out of bounds. That one is off Smith. And on our sideline, our reporter, David Aldrich. Well, Kevin, Steve Kerr gave me a few minutes to catch up with him. He told me they'll be looking to stretch the defense with their ability to knock down shots from deep. He said success on the outside will translate to success on the inside. Sounds like instead of going inside out, they're going to go outside in. Interesting. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. You know, hard to create spacing without the threes. Thompson against Smith. The shot by Thompson, no good. The D a little slow to get in his face. They're fortunate it didn't cost him. Thompson, a screen on Thompson. The screen from Thompson. Poke loose. Cleveland needs to get a shot off here. That's a two from Hood. The Cavaliers again can't hit. Here's Green. It's good. He makes his first shot of the game. A lot of personalities in this game, Chris. Uh, such a big part of what makes the NBA so entertaining. Oh, man, think about our boy Dre Dre. <laughs> Draymond Green, for those of you that don't, that don't know Day Day, but uh, Draymond Green, his personality is not only great for his team, but also uh, for us fans uh, when we see him on the court. <laughs> How about Embiid, uh, Mr. Personality yes, he on is. social media? You love it. And uh, how about uh, Jalen Brown with his uh, wise ways on the chessboard, <laughs> the most interesting <laughs> basketball player in the world? So all of these guys are exciting, fun personalities uh, to watch for them. Here is Durant. Tristan Thompson picking up that last bucket. Over Hood. Durant, no good. Well, he's having a tough go at it so far this quarter. Not much dropping for him. 
and here's Sexton. He hasn't scored yet. That I'm sure will change. That gives them the lead. It's been pretty clever inside. Exceptional at finding space to get a shot off near the rim. The Warriors have gone just two of seven so far. A little bit of a slow start for them. Here's Durant. And the layup's good off the glass. Durant's got five. Nice bucket. There's no question about his skills at the offensive end. So timeout called here. The first for Cleveland. And KD opting out of his deal, Greg, over the summer to re-sign with the Warriors. And he did so to get a larger deal than he could have otherwise. Durant had already sacrificed money for the team before. Not a surprise to see him get closer to his value. Seems the super team will be intact for years to come. Looking at who's out there now for the Warriors. Bell is checked in for Cousins. Yurebko comes in for Draymond Green. Andre Iguodala. He's checked in for Kevin Durant. And it's Livingston in for Clay Thompson. Now here's Love. Now on the scoring column with that bucket. One for two this game. Well, it's hard to keep Love for scoring. When he's using his strength to bury these shots, it is tough. Curry kicks to Yurebko. Iguodala with a screen on Nance. Over in the corner, Livingston. There's a good screen off the pick and another basket for Golden State. We've seen the lead change hands quite a bit in this one. And guys, I think each team knows they can win this game. Just a matter who can catch that moment. Now here's Love over Bell. It's rebounded by Livingston. 43 seconds left to play in the first quarter. It's blocked. Champion Golden State Warriors. We're all set to bring you NBA action. This is Kevin Harlan at the table alongside Greg Anthony and Doris Burke. We'll be hearing from David Aldridge from the sideline. And a look at the starters for the Cavaliers. Sexton and Smith are the guard tandem. Love is the four with Thompson in the middle. And it's Hood in at the three. Well, the Cleveland Cavaliers went to their fourth straight finals last season. To me, nothing short of remarkable. They had to fight their way through an improving Eastern Conference. And the reality is the Warriors have more talent than everybody else, and that's why they win the NBA Finals. And now we'll go to David Aldridge, who spoke with Steve Kerr. David. Thanks, Kevin. I asked him which part of their offensive scheme they feel confident in, and he said, to no surprise, outside shooting. He told me our guys can flat out kill it from deep. So we're going to try to get that dialed up early on. We will see, Kevin. Back to you. Thank you, David. You know, hard to create spacing without the threes. Here's Thompson. Kevin Durant picking up that last basket. That shot misses. Nice D from Cousins. A shot by Thompson and no one's around. Wide open shot is on the money. Thompson's got his first two points. Cavaliers have gone one of three for the field to start this one so far. Sexton the pass to Love. Just around a minute and a half into the first quarter. Six on the shot clock. And it's in after a nice bounce off the right side. Well, there's the mid-range game of Kevin Love on point. Boy, you give him a little daylight, he's going to make that shot. Hood against Durant. He kicks it to Thompson. Takes a three. Hits it from three-point range. Thompson's got five points so far. How about three or four from the floor to start? That's always a good sign. Hood, the pass to Love. Some nice passing by Cleveland here, and they pick up two. Yeah, there are several ways that Thompson can be a factor on the offensive end, and he is still adding to that arsenal. And Cousins kicks to Durant. Cousins against Thompson. And Cousins gets it to go. 
Boy, the offense is really clicking. Four for five from the field to start. Nice. The Cavaliers trail by three. And, of course, we, we know about DeMarcus Cousins last season and the torn Achilles. I'm just glad to see him back out on the floor and, and fully recover. He's put in a lot of work in terms of rehab and make sure that he can get back to doing what he does best. Now here's Durant following the miss by Rodney Hood. It's good from long range. But Kevin Durant plays with great pace. He never allows the defense to speed him up. Just a pretty pull-up jumper. Now here's Sexton, guarded by Kirk. Love dishes to Sexton. That's a pick by Love. The shot by Sexton, no good. And with Cousins and that injury, never an easy one to come back from. Yeah, it's true, but fortunately, Cousins has the kind of skill set that he's going to be effective no matter when he's on the floor. And, and great outside shot, the footwork, very smooth in terms of ball handling for that position. And most of the players who aren't the same after an Achilles tear don't have the same skill set that Cousins possesses. That's why I think he'll be fine once he recovers from this injury. And the Warriors with some changes. Jordan Bell's checked in for Draymond Green. Iguodala comes in for Kevin Durant. And it's Livingston in for Steph Curry. And the Cavaliers will go with a different look here. Harry Nance has checked in for Tristan Thompson. Corver comes in for Rodney Hood. Teddy Osman, he's checked in for J.R. Smith. And it's Hill in for Sexton. Now here is Hill. Over Livingston. And misses it off the right side of the rim. Warriors leading by eight. Bell passes to Thompson. And the lead now, double digits on that bucket. Thompson's got seven points. And it just seems that every pass they make is leading to a score. Just great ball movement. Left side, Nance. 